My choice, you've heard that before. That kind of means, like, don't come and tell me what I have to do with my body. So, without further ado, please welcome the Wild Doc, Dr. Dale Brown. I try not to actually formulate a speech because I just I hate speeches. I just want to talk to you all as brothers and sisters um, under Christ. Uh, many things that I've been thinking about, I've, I've literally, my wife's over there like, get the kids, they're running all over the place, they're right in front of the speaker, you know, they're up on the hill. And I'm like, am I infringing on my children's rights right now to completely live free by telling them to sit down, be quiet, stop playing with sticks. <laughs> But uh, you know, throw me under I think the bus. about the freedoms that my kids have. <laughs> and the reality is, a lot of a lot of people's freedoms, a lot of children's freedoms, have been trampled on for many, many years. You know, I thought about you know the uprising that's taking place, and I love to see that. But I've been praying for an uprising for far too long, and I think a lot of you probably have too. We've been watching children be stricken with chronic illnesses, um, diabetes, autism, ADHD. Now we're seeing the suicide rates go skyrocketing up, and we've been seeing that over many, many years here now. And very few people are really standing up, speaking out for those children's freedoms. You know, there's a child today, there's many children today that have no freedoms like my children do. It's ultimately because they were led astray, or rather their parents were led astray. See, the real evil and the corruption that's taking place in this nation right now is taking the love of a mother, a love of a father they have for their children and using it against the child. They're ultimately enslaving children. They're enslaving children to become profit generators for a pharmaceutical industry that does not care about a children's life. But yet, but yet our politicians, our legislators will sit in a private room with that organization, that industry, while barring us from speaking to them. I'll tell you an example of uh, a few years pa past, they were, uh, there was the health committee, they were passing some legislation. I can't tell you whether it was a bill or a resolution or exactly what it was. If I understand correctly, it was a resolution to encourage schools to, to encourage parents to get the flu vaccine. And I went there. And they asked me who I was and what I did, and I said I was a father, and that's it. You know, I'm a chiropractor, and I didn't want to share that with them because I immediately knew the, the negative connotation that would have in front of a health committee when they're having medical physicians stand there and speak in opposition of me. Speak to the idea that we need to be promoting that for our children, that that would save more lives, that would protect our children against illnesses. I mean, the flu vaccine's been around for how many tens of years? Tens of years, and actually we've seen the rates of influenza illness and pneumonia go up since they started vaccinating with that vaccine. Well, I went there in front of our, our, our health committee here in Tennessee, and I spoke to them, and I, I read from research after research after research study. I was the only one who brought research. And the health committee could see that I was very fired up. They even tried to get me to settle down. And what happened at that committee hearing is they Amos, tabled Amos. it, they didn't vote on it. And my point you here is the next the meeting, the very next Wednesday, I closed down my office, I went there to speak again. And I listened to the health department rattle off a bunch of lies, not use one single bit of research and evidence and scientific information to be able to convince the committee to vote in favor of this resolution to promote this flu vaccine to our children. And the week before, my last statement was, if you do, if you do this, if you pass this, what you will see, you will see more of the very thing that you're saying you want to protect our children against, and that is, in essence, flu-related death. And I was right, the very next year, the flu-related illness rates of our children went skyrocketing up again. That next Wednesday, I stood there in front of that health committee, or I didn't even stand there, because all I could do was sit there in the crowd. I watched the health department t tell lies just like they are now. I've gone to our health department in Montgomery County and I had a lawyer send me a letter from the health department saying that I could no longer set foot on the health department property. And the reason was, was because I went into the health department uh, 
waiting room. And I told the health department their, their patients about the CDC whistleblower because I knew that Joey Smith, the director of the health department in Montgomery County, he knew about the CDC scientists who confessed to committing fraud and lying about the fact that vaccines do cause neurological injury that we call autism. He admitted to that. He knew that they were lying to us. I said, then very minimum, every one of your patients, every one of the parents, they are here out of a love for their child. They love their children, they want the best for their child, but you are taking advantage of that. The bare minimum those parents deserve is for you to say that there is a scientist at the CDC who's confessed a fraud, and bare minimum, I want you to know that I can't tell you whether what he is saying is right or whether what the rest of medicine wants to say that vaccines don't cause injury. I can't tell you one way or the other, but I want you to know that. You know what, so I went there when they were lying on a Christian radio station. They were lying about the efficacy of vaccines. All right, we have so many people in positions of power right now, and back to my original thought there, going in front of the health committee and listening to the health department tell them lies, promoting this vaccine, and they immediately, the, the chairman says, does anybody else, after listening to the health department, does anybody else have anyone they would like to speak? Please, and, yeah. thank you. and I sat there dead center, dead center front row, and one of the ladies, one member, of that committee who listened to me speak the week before, she looked at me in my eyes and mouthed to me. She didn't say it aloud. She says, I'm sorry. She wow. couldn't call on me. Wow. Guys, right now, where we're at in America right now, we are fighting for our freedoms that are on a piece of paper that are, um, you know, in, in essence, in, in, in relatively speaking, we're, we're fighting for freedoms that we all get to enjoy. But there are people out there right now that are bound by laws of nature because they have a chronic illness, because they've been injured. They're bound by fear. Guys, there are people in shackled in bondage right now because they're afraid, because they've been led astray. And so when we leave here today, I'm begging you, and I believe the majority of you that are here right now are already doing what I'm going to ask you to do, but we need more people to do it. We have to go on the offensive. We cannot stand back and, and say, pretty please. I would like to keep my freedoms, what I can do with me and my children, my freedom to choose. No parent has ever been given the freedom of choice because freedoms to choose only come when you're given the truth when you're given accurate information. And if you're never given that, you've never truly lived free. What they're doing right now is all orchestrated in my opinion, because the reality is when I watch them, and, and I wasn't studying coronavirus before this whole event. Like it was just, you know, it wasn't even on my radar. I had heard about them wanting to make a, a cold, you know, the common cold virus vaccine. You know, and then I started studying. And it was ironic to me that New York was the epicenter of where they've been doing all the research on coronavirus rates and infection rates and pneumonia prior to this. The naval ship showed roughly a 60% asymptomatic transmission rate and infection rate. Well, ironically, every year prior from 2016, 17, and 18, when they studied it, it was a seasonal infection that made up roughly 40%, 40% roughly, actually it was like 38.6%, I don't wanna to lie to y'all, so on that point percentage, I might be wrong, but it was roughly 38%, and it was roughly 68% asymptomatic transmission. So the rates of symptomatic transmission, or symptomatic illness, I'd rather, I need to say, yeah. is no different than what we're seeing right now. They have not mentioned one time, Dr. Fossey or any of our health leaders haven't mentioned one time, all the research that went into our taxpayer payer dollars paid for to figure out the transmission of this type of virus. Coronavirus is a class of viruses, like influenza is a class of virus. You have A, B, who knows? There's probably C and D and F and Z out there. We don't know. Science doesn't know. How can they sit here and say that this is a new novel virus that they can't even tell us what all is old? But they did know the rates of coronaviruses before. They knew that they would go up in October, November, and they knew that they would fall in or February until April. Bossy says, I predict, he says, I predict it'll fall in April. 
He didn't have to predict that. He could have looked at the science that's available to every single one of us. They're playing upon people's collective ignorance and unknowing. And we should be able to go out and just have fun with our family, have fun with our friends, be able to go out and mingle with our community members without having to sit there and say, I've got to study my butt off so that I can actually stand up and have knowledge and information to fight against corruption. The pharmaceutical industry will not lay down even if we push back their mandated vaccines, their mandated tracing, even if we stop all that. I do not want to go back to the way it was before, all right? If that was normal in our past, and that's what was happening to one in five children in the United States being stricken with a chronic illness, not having the freedoms that my children do today, I'm not okay going back to that, and I hope neither are you. That's right. But I'll, they're orchestrated, they are technical, they know what they're doing. That's what I'm getting at when I'm going through those that data, that, that, that those research studies. They knew this all prior to. They knew it would go up, they knew it would go down, and they knew that the fact that the American people lives their life in faith and trust relatively to believe that their medical physicians are going to tell them the truth. They believe that the health department is gonna tell them the truth about what's best for them and their families and their children. But I'll tell you, if we just sat back and said, this is the direction our nation's been going for so long, with more and more children being in bondage to mental and physical disabilities, that is not a direction I will allow my children, my family to go in. Uh -huh. Now I say that, and I say it as, as if I have control. Guys, I'll tell you, standing here as a Christian, and it's on a Sunday, and I think to myself, as I study the Bible, you know what? There are too many coincidences with HR 6666. Well, maybe they thought they could fool us because they threw in an extra six. I don't know. You know, when I think about that stuff, I'm not saying that is the sign of the Antichrist right there, guaranteed. I'm not a prophet. I'm not going to attempt to prophesy. But I'll tell you, the false prophets of medicine, the World Health Organization and the CDC, who have said time and time again there was going to be a doomsday virus in the early 2000s with avian flu, supposed to kill 150 million people. And it didn't. But I tell you, they got their money. They took away some freedoms. They increased their mandates. And then in 2009, they did the exact same thing, saying it was going to be another doomsday virus. It was going to kill more people. It was going to be millions upon millions of people stricken with that illness. And they were wrong again. How long are we going to allow these false prophets to lead our nation and lead our people, lead our medical physicians? I That's beg right. and I plead with any medical physician out there. There are a lot of them with good hearts, but a lot of them will speak to me and say, I have to do what I'm told to do or I lose my job. I lose my ability to provide right. for my family. So in essence, if they do the right thing, they'll lose their freedoms, mm -hmm. their ability right. to pursue happiness. But I'll tell you, everybody, something I've been reading in a book, it's called Bonhoeffer. <laughs> it was about a pastor in Nazi Germany at the time of the rise of Hitler. It's Bonhoeffer, pastor, martyr, spy, and prophet. That was the other one, his four things. And he said, you have to do what God tells you to do. And what happens to you, that is God's business. Some of us will go down fighting. Some of us will lose our rights. But we have to stand, we have to stand strong. Because we cannot go back to the new normal. But, like I said, like I said, or the old normal, and I'm not talking about their normal, I'm talking about, I want to see it where people really can live free, but I realize that here on earth right now, if the Bible is true, you know what, I see it getting a lot worse. I either see this moment in time as either a reset in our society, in our nation, and it will be a reset and we'll go back, like the flood. Maybe God's giving us an opportunity and he'll say, if enough people stand up, enough people call out for my name, if enough people will say, my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors, they're worth me losing my job. They're worth me losing my identity that the rest of society sees and believes that I am. We can reset and we get to continue on with life better than where it was before, with more children being able to have a mind, having a capability in their physical minds 
to be able to preach the word of God, to be able to go out and have a marriage, have children. But a lot of children aren't getting that opportunity right now. So, or if we don't fight hard enough, if we don't do enough right now, then our rights and our freedoms to live life without being tracked, without being forced to eventually take a mark. Now, I'm not telling you that the vaccine mark, Bill Gates' mark, his tattoo that they want to use is the mark. I don't know. I just definitely don't want to be a false prophet and be, be it wrong. So I'm going to say I don't know. It's way too close for comfort for me, though, because in the Old Testament, they used to stone false prophets if you made a bad prophecy they used to stone you and i can see why they probably did that because you know right now people have lost their jobs people have committed suicide you know what they're probably children being abused at home they're children going hungry right now so it's wrecked a lot of people's lives right now so if they gave false prophets and that's what happened they'd be like okay we can't have that ever again and i wish that's what we would do today not stone them sorry i should probably clarify i don't wish that we would stone them i wish that they would at least lose their job they would no longer be able to make their false models and make their false predictions that ruin so many lives they were wrong they will not admit they're wrong they will continue on with the lie they've achieved what they wanted to achieve which was social pressure social engineering so that when people drive by and they see our signs, there is a hate in their spirit for us right now. There's a level of that. And there are others that are driving past who are saying, oh my God, I wish I would have known about that and could have joined in. But I'll tell you folks, either way, I'm gonna continue to fight for my children. I'm gonna continue to do what I can to save each and every parent and show them if they truly love their children, then they'll put down the TV remote, they'll take the time to just spend with their children and ultimately spend the time to realize and understand God's love for them. And he provided for them from the beginning to the end. And my final thought here right now, you may be standing there like, you need to hurry up, I don't know. You know what? What they're trying to do right now is an instill a level of false idolatry. Yes, absolutely. I believe that the Bible is true from the beginning to the end. And God said he provided all things for us that we would need. Medicine right now is saying that there is nothing that can save the lives of these people except you all losing your freedoms, your rights, your, your ability to go out in public. So they're saying you need to wait on us. So they are standing in and they're standing up and saying we are the gods of this time. Right. We are the lords of this time. We are the rulers of this time and they're not. God is. He's provided the things for us, and I'm not going to go into that, but I want you to know God's provided everything we need. We need to just seek Him, Amen. seek His face, seek His understanding, seek His word, and we will identify and we will realize what those things are. And right now, I believe it's a love for our brothers and our sisters that will ultimately, that love within us will make us go and do more than what we've done here today. We're standing here, and this is a symbol of what we're willing to do. But if we go home and we just say, yay, the orders have been lifted, we can go back to life as it was, then the pharmaceutical industry will continue doing what they've been doing all these years. Yeah. And they will strategically plan out their next step to removing our rights in the future. And they will win out in the future. All right? I see it getting worse. I do. I don't know if this is a reset or if this is where it just keeps getting worse. But be prepared for either way. All right? Amen. What I mean by that and being prepared is know who your God and Father is. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thanks so much.